Hey guys, this is George, and today I have a product uh, I'll show you guys. Um, I got the bridge keyboard, um, and I kickstarted this project a couple months back, and it finally came to me. And um, I would like to do a little review on it. It came to me um, yesterday, and I've had a couple hours with it, and I think um, I know what this keyboard is about. So first, um, it's a keyboard for the iPad, so I'm going to bring in my iPad real quick. Um, this will not work if you have iPad um, with any case uh, or you know, anything uh, on top of it. So uh, let's put it in. Um, these came with iPad 2 shims, uh, which are the little rubber piece is connected to the f the rubber um the m aluminum holding um pieces and let me put this down real quick all right um so what is it is in it looks pretty nice um looks like a macbook pro pretty much uh but a lot smaller and thinner well actually the macbook pro retina is pretty thin so um it's like that. Um, so this keyboard uh, it uses Bluetooth, so you have to turn on Bluetooth. And it took me a little while to figure it out. I had to actually use uh, the start guide. Um, it does not turn on your keyboard to Bluetooth or your speaker to Bluetooth automatically. You have to, when you get this, you have to click Control K to turn on the keyboard, and I'll show you real quick. If I click, um, control K, well, um, I guess it's only for new, um, when it comes to new, but you have to press control K to turn on the keyboard, or it's a link, and you have to press command B four seconds until it beeps, then press it again for one second, so it shows up on your Bluetooth, and then you connect it, which is not exactly the best. Um, you know, most people don't read the sort guide, and they'll be confused with this product. And I wish they, you know, when you as soon as you start it up, um, it would automatically turn on both. But that's a minor concern. Um, but I, w I really wish they made it a little bit better. Um, second, uh. You know this this keyboard um is very good, uh, but there are little things that tick me off a little bit. Um, I don't have my MacBook Pro in this room, um, to show you guys. Uh, but you know if you see a Mac or the arrow keys are about half this uh, key, and then these two would be the up and down key, and this would be the right key. And it would take up about this much space, and this would be for the left shift button. Um, and you know that that kind of ticked me off. Um, I don't I don't like this because I am simply used to the MacBook Pro keys, and when it was originally advertised on the Kickstarter page, um, it had keyboard keys like this, and it was advertised as a nearly exact copy of the Mac uh, keyboard, which, you know, um, they also said it would also be manufactured in the same factory as the MacBook Pro keyboard. Now, I don't know if they're lying about this, but I've definitely no noticed keys are a lot rougher, and uh, the paint on these keys are not really painted on. They have, like, stickers almost um or like stamped on which i don't know it just makes it's not like it, it like um differs that much but it just like feels a little bit different and the keys are really rough um they're not like at all like like the smooth plastic apple uses um which you know it's it's a little minor concern you can still type great with it um, another thing is the backspace. Now, this is my main problem.
because I barely use the arrow keys, especially on the iPad. The backspace when you're typing, I'm used to like just clicking around here, and this is so small now that you know that's become a little problem. Um, you know, I I wouldn't mind if these keys got cut short a little bit more for this to be a little bit larger. Um, you know, I mean they they are working with the tight space. But I just wish they would have somehow made this a little bit bigger. Um, you know, that's more convenient. Um, also, they don't have a backlight, even though this thing is actually pretty expensive. Um, the speaker version is $210, um, which is a little bit pricey. But it is made out of aluminum, and it does match Apple style. Um, and it looked cool at first. Um, Still looks cool, but you know, that's changed a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, it's very pricey, and the thing is, they didn't include a backlight. Now, they claim that there's not enough space in this for it to hold a backlight, but you look at this, and it's thicker than the MacBook Air, it says bottom, and when it's closed. Is actually thicker than the MacBook Air, and it's not even doing the um the wedge. So this is basically half of um what the MacBook Pro Retina is, and the MacBook Pro Retina holds a really good graphics card, quad core i7 processor, and a bunch of other stuff, and a battery, which this only has a battery, a keyboard, and Bluetooth, pretty much. So. You know, it would, it would have been great um, if they included black backlight, especially, you know, how much money they got over their goal. Um, I wish they spent some of the money towards, you know, a better keyboard and backlight. Um, so, that's, uh, after all those cons are away, um, let's talk about the speaker a little bit. And I'll show you how this works in action in just a little bit. But um, the speaker is not so great. It's I wish it was better. Um, it was advertised as you know a much better speaker than your iPad speaker, which isn't that great either. Um, it's definitely like livable, but it's not that good. Um, it was supposed to be a lot better, but it's not. It's almost on par. In some situations, I'd rather use an iPad key, um, speaker more. Um, so yeah, uh, that's another concern. Um, so let me just uh, open up pages. Uh, let's open up a new document and this will load all those some of my school documents. Let's create document. There we go, blank. And let's type, um, go with A. Let's push for it to focus. A there. Sorry, that's my typo. Hey there, what's... Okay, yeah, apparently I can't type. Um, so what's up? You know, how's it going? I like lots Usually type like this is abysmal. Um, I, uh, the keyboard works great, but it is also uh, smaller than the MacBook Pro keyboard. So, well, it's smaller than pretty much uh, every Apple keyboard because they are exactly the same. The keys are a little bit smaller. The shift is a little bit smaller. Um, I realized, like, even though I said. I really use this. I actually do use this more on the iPad um, because I'm not usually like two-handed typing on an iPad. I use one hand, and sometimes you know I just go to whichever shift is closest. Um, but on the Mac, you know I use these uh, like all my fingers to type, not the traditional way, but you know 
um, I use all my fingers to type, so, you know, I reach this button more, so this is actually pretty annoying for me, um, I, I, I know that, let's, uh, there's a keyboard button where you can break, bring up this keyboard, and that's a problem with iOS 6, um, where they had reboots, when you reboots, and you can see me, yeah. Um, so, I knew that would happen, um, let's see if I can bring it back here again. Alright, um, so you bring up this keyboard, you can see, um, this is actually bigger than this. So, you know, if you, even, even if you're used to typing on the iPad, isn't this a little bit annoying? Um, although the backspace is the same, this is also a lot closer, um, and it's just easier when it's on screen to be this small because, I don't know, um, this chip button here is actually flipped, this is smaller, this is bigger, this is bigger, this is small, I don't know, it's, it's weird, um, I wish they paid more attention to that, or maybe it's intended. I don't know, um, but you know, it's it's a good keyboard. It's not the best, um, but I I don't have that much experience with other keyboards. Um, I've seen other keyboards. I've used a little bit of other keyboards, but this um, but I'll have to say this isn't the best. Um, but it does include some of the things that actually make it pretty nice. Um, it has a brightness control. Um, you know, up and down, you have bringing up the keyboard, and this is a gallery button where you press it like all your photos play in a slideshow almost. Um, it's you know, I don't know, um, unless you want to use a $500 picture frame and you're like Bill Gates Apple Pied version and you want to um, spend $500 on a picture frame, go ahead. Um, no one's stopping you. Um, it's, it's like a screensaver, but for s s iPad, I don't know how I feel about screensaver. You've got spotlight, where you press it, and then you go spotlight. Um, you can, um, switch the language. Oh, wait. Uh, supposedly they're fixing this in 6.1, and I've been using my iOS products, a lot less. Um, you can see I'm using my Droid DNA at this moment because my my iPhone is also having the same problem. And um, yeah, so I'm using my Droid DNA um, until they fix it because it's really annoying. So you know, um, this switches the language. So if you can see, it switches to okay. Forward focus. It switches to you know whatever language you have. Uh, I've only turned on Chinese and English, so you can switch between those. Um, you've al also got media controls, um, you know, forward, um, play, and let's let's actually bring up a song real quick. Um, let's see what we've got here. Let's play the Beatles. Um, let's bring it up. Let's play it in tune. It's pretty close. Hey. So you can see it's playing, and then if you press this, you can stop it, you know, go, and then, um, this changes the songs. Um, it's not, they should have put, like, the skip sign, rather than this, but you can hold it, um, you know, so I, I, I don't know, um, I mean, you can hold it and do it, but. Weird. It's, it moves by one second. Level. Yeah, it's it's really slow. Um, but you know, whatever. Um, that's not a big concern or anything. Um, this is volume controls. Volume controls. As you can see, I'll click on that. Um, so I think it's. Let's see which side is it playing from. Is it playing from here? Yes. Okay. So you know when you pair it up. It actually still plays through here, and actually, let me see if it's actually paired up or not. Okay, it's actually not paired up, sorry. 
Um, you can actually still like use multitasking, multitasking like that. Um, let me see if it's willing. Um, I actually have to use it again. Uh oh. have to press it pretty much every time. There we go. And then press it again. And then you come back. It's snowing. And also the speaker, it's... I hate it. I really do hate it. Um, it's not so much the sound it produces, but how long it lags. If you start playing a YouTube video, it would take one or two seconds for it to go beep or like have like a weird clicking noise, and then it would start playing the sound. So you would miss at least one second of it, and it's it's weird. So you know, if I start playing, yeah, you hear you hear that? It's like a popping noise on the speaker, and then it would start playing on the iPad speaker it straight away starts playing i don't know if that's a bluetooth speaker thing because this is my first time using bluetooth for speaker but it is annoying um and i don't know what to say about it so you can still play But it's not so much louder, and, um, let's play some Skrillex, um, so you can hear, like, when it, you know. There's a lot of distortion, um, you know, like, you can hear it. Yeah, so this, the sound doesn't come out that that great, um, and honestly, um, let me turn off the speaker. You can hear it, the iPad speaker is actually better and louder in some cases, that's what I'm saying in some cases, and in vocals, this is actually performing pretty nice, but in bass heavy, um, like especially, um, what do you call it, um, other words, dubstep, uh, or like tech, uh, techno, techno music, um, you know, it's, it's, doesn't perform that well. So overall, um, this is a good keyboard case, uh, and it does come with the speaker, but if you're buying, if you do want, um, this, and I'll show you the hinge, the hinges work great, by the way, they're pretty sturdy, but they have like a weird, um, closing hinge, it's not like the Mac hinge where you can like open up all like any angle you want when you straight open it up it, it goes at like this angle and then you bend it it goes straight to that angle and then you can like you know slowly adjust it but it's either this or this when you want to like bend it down a little bit so it's that's another weird thing um but it does close up and um it does like you pretty much kind of hold your ipad as a a laptop almost and it does look like kind of like a Mac um, but I don't know if it's really worth it for $210 to be honest um, you know if you do really want a m completely aluminum this is actually actually completely al aluminum um, you know and it looks like Apple style keyboard case um, definitely go for it um, if you if you're willing to spend the money, I would not recommend going for the speaker version because um, the non-speaker version is about 180 and the speaker version is about 100, uh, 210, which is um, a thirty dollar difference. And for thirty dollars, that speaker is not worth it, especially when you have a speaker on your iPad already that performs just as well as that one. So why waste the thirty dollars on that? Um, another thing is. Uh, there are like Logitech uh, keyboards which are about eighty dollars less, um, but it is only the bottom shelf for them that is aluminum, and everything else is 
plastic. So this is much more sturdy. And if I can open it again single-handedly, which I can't, I'm gonna get down. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, when you st straight open it up, you can like adjust it a little bit, and then it kind of like. Um, let's see if I can adjust it in like this. All right, on my leg, and like okay. So if, if I adjust it like this, it stay it locks in like that. Um, it locks in like that, and then the next one is straight to like kind of like solid like that and then you know it, it has like a weird click to it you know where it locks in at that angle almost um it i i guess it's probably where these kind of hinges stay on it's a minor concern um i'm not i'm not complaining but it's something to note um it's good you know um when you can hear but it is very solid and I don't have a problem breaking this, um, or anything. Um, the thing I'm worried about is these hinges. If you're gonna throw it in a bag, when you close these hinges in, they stick out a little bit, and I'm worried about them breaking. Um, they are selling a neoprene case for $35, which I'm not sure it's worth it at all. Actually, I don't think it's worth it at all. They're sending it free, um, uh, for backers. For Kickstarter, and I'll, I'll be showing that in a later video, but I'm not sure if it's worth it. You know, you can get just get a generic laptop bag and put all your tech stuff in it, your iPad and your bridge case at the same time. Um, that will work, but you know, it, everything else is pretty solid. Um, I don't have you know anything to worry about, and they've got like little rubber feet on both sides, um, which you know do help you protect a little bit. So yeah. Uh, this is a good keyboard case from Bridge. Um, you can get it for either $180 or $210. I would recommend the $180 one without the speaker because the speaker is not all that great. Um, so yeah, uh, this is George, and I'll see you guys next time. Alright, bye guys.